the agenda for today's talk is we're going to briefly derive the T distribution and the non-central T distribution and these are very important for when you're conducting a T test or the power or sample size in a T test and then we're going to illustrate these two curves in R looking at the shapes and, the ca and how to calculate probability in R for these two distributions. To derive the t-distribution, we first have to let a collect a sample from a normal distribution or let this variable be a normal distribution. Standard normal mean 0 variance 1 and y be a chi-squared with r degrees of freedom and x and y need to be independent. The densities for a standard normal distribution is this and this is the density of a chi-squared with r degrees of freedom. Now we want to find this distribution right here, which is the square root of a chi-squared over r in the denominator, and the numerator is a standard normal distribution. But whenever we go from r2 space, we have to map to r2 space. We have to create a dummy variable y, or u equal to y, so we can go r2 to r2. The Jacobian of the transformation is the partial of, of x and y take the determinant, we get uh, square root of u over the square root of r. And I calculate the density of the joint density of t and u. That's equal to the joint density of x and y with this x and y plugged in here times the absolute value of the Jacobian. And since x and y are independent, we can separate their densities and then it's easier to plug in those values. So here is the standard normal but in place of x we replace this value right there and in place of y we, we substitute u in the chi-square distribution we simplify so this 2 r over you know raised to the r plus 2 is combined with this 2 raised to the one half um, the gamma comes down the, these E's are combined and, and U, this U is combined with this U to the one half and the square root of R is combined with pi so then to get the marginal distribution of T or the T distribution we have to integrate out U so we do that. So we take this joint density, move out all the constants, so that's everything without a u, and this is what's left over. Well this is a gamma distribution, so they would call this alpha and then this denominator here beta, so it's a gamma alpha beta, and we know how that integrates. This integrates to gamma of alpha, which was r plus 1 over 2, and the beta was in the denominator up here, raised to the alpha power, r plus 1 over 2. So now we simplify this. The gamma just moves over. The r and the pi stay the same. This 2 raised to the r plus 1 over 2 cancels with this 2 raised to the r plus 1 over 2. Um, there's a negative exp uh, exponent here, so we just take it down to the bottom. And this is the distribution for a T distribution. So whenever you conduct a T test, power analysis, sample size for a T test, this distribution plays a part behind the scenes. And we'll look at what this, we'll uh, look at this graphically in a minute. But I first want to drive the non-central T distribution, which will go even quicker. This is the last page. So here instead of a, a standard normal, we have a normal delta 1. So our X is distributed normally or y is a, again a chi-squared or independent the, here is the, the density of a normal with mean delta density of a chi-squared we're going to do the same transformation except for this variable is not a standard normal it is a normal delta 1 variable Jacobian is the same uh, we're going to come up with this joint density and then integrate out u 
well the joint density is the same here we plug in X into the normal distribution so this is X and then we minus the mean which we said was Delta so this is the a normal distribution we substitute in Y for the chi squared and we take it times the absolute value of the Jacobian okay, so we could then simplify this with, but it'd be very similar to what we did in the central T distribution so I'm going to go straight to integrating out the U so the density of a non central T distribution we move all the constants out so that's everything without a U and what is left over is is this well we don't really have closed form expressions for this density we have to uh, analyze it numerically and so this is it this is the density of a non-central t distribution so one note is this one little parameter right there delta that's called the non-centrality parameter and we're going to see how that affects the shape of the t distribution when we look at this in r okay we're in R I'm on a Linux machine Ubuntu specifically and I'm using RK Ward which is the GUI for a uh, for R and I'm going to illustrate the central and non-central T distributions and for this illustration we'll just pick a degrees of freedom of 30 create some data and a T and we will plot this data so this is the central T distribution, just sometimes called the T distribution, and it's equivalent to saying the non-centrality parameter is zero. And if you were to conduct a t-test, then you would find critical regions here in the tail. For this illustration, we're not going to find that, but we'll just pick some value, say 0.5, and uh, find area from that so we just randomly pick 0.5 y I just did so now we want to find the area under the curve of the central the central t distribution and the PT function in R is the way to do it and that's the distribution function so it calculates the area under curve from a specific value and here we chose 0.5 and our deg degrees of freedom was defined as 30. And if we look at this, it's 0.6896 under the curve. That's you know the total area is one, so that's 68.9 or 69 percent of the area under, left of 0.5. Now to calculate the area to the right, because the total is one, we could just subtract that from one, and we get 0.31. So this is the area to the right of 0.5 and we add those together we get 1. There's also another way to calculate it using the PT function we just say lower tail equal false. If this is true which is the default setting it's a cumulative distribution function and if we cancel it 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 goes to the right so it's a 1 minus cumulative distribution function and these two values equal now let's look at some non-centrality or non-central t distributions I'll pick a non-centrality parameter of 1 and let's plot that and here it is so, and note that it's shifted to the right and the more we uh, or the larger we make the non-centrality parameter the, the more this is shifted to the right and that becomes important when we're looking at power or sample size selection in a uh, t-test. So here let's calculate the area under the curve from this non-central t-distribution. That's not a lot of area so we'd expect not a big value. Here we use the same pt function in R, that's the distribution function of t. We calculate from a specific value here that's 0.5 degrees of freedom 1 and we use our non-centrality parameter of 1 it's another uh, parameter in the function and that area is 0 0.307 which we thought was not going to you know we knew it wasn't going to be very big to calculate the to the right of that value we just say lower tail faults 
and we get 69%. So those two add to one. Now let's look at increasing the non-centrality parameter to two and plot the function. And it's shifted to the right. So there's even less area under this curve shifted to the right. And the more we increase positively the non-centrality parameter, it, it, it keeps going this way. And again, we could calculate the area under that using the, P, the PT function in R. But let's look at some negative centrality parameters and go back to the here. Um, if we have a non-centrality parameter of negative 1, it's shifted to the left. And negative 2, it's shifted to the left again. And again, this is important when you're calculating power and sample size for a T, T statistic. And here's the simple, uh, the central T distribution. And so that's how it works. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you.